Hello YouTube, uh, welcome to this video. We're here we're gonna check out all the factions in the new Age of Empire 4. Just a quick presentation of what are their strengths, their weaknesses, and their specificities. So we're gonna start off in order. Uh, the English faction, what they are particularly uh, powerful at is defending against early game ag aggression. All their villagers are arm armed with bows. Uh, their uh, town centers are much more powerful defensive structures. And in the feudal age, they have one of the strongest units in the game the longbowmen, which are quite simply the strongest archers in the game. They have better range than other archers. Uh, they construct farms for cheaper, which is good for their economy. Uh, constructing the farms near the mills gather, uh, makes them gather 15% faster. They have vanguard man-at-arms available in the Dark Age. They are the only faction that has men-at-arms in the Dark Age, and in fact men-at-arms in the Feudal Age as well, which allows them to be stronger in the early game. Town centers, outpost towers and keeps that provide attack uh, speed bonus to affected units. And the military ships have plus one range. As you'll see, every single faction has a specific C uh, based uh, advantage. Now going into detail, every faction also has specific landmark buildings you're going to advance through as you uh, tear up through the ages. So for the English, you have the Council Hall, which is basically a uh, buffed uh, archery range. As you can see, it produces longbowmen at plus 100% speed. Uh, or instead, you can build the Abbey of Kings. Heals all fr nearby friendly units that are out of combat by plus 4 every 1.5 seconds. I personally usually go the council hall. I like unit production, I like my macro, I like being able to build units and that's why I prefer the council hall at that stage of the game. I'd rather build two archers than heal one archer. In the feudal age, you'll have to choose in order to upgrade between the king's palace, acts as a town center, so more an economy focused uh, landmark, or the white tower, acts as a keep more you can use as it as a defensive structure or as an offensive castle, though that's risky because losing your landmark in a failed attack is a big, big blow to your civilization. Um, so I will usually, the safe option is obviously the town center, build up your economy, having a second town center, building more villagers, building more resource gathering is what that town center will help you accomplish. Whereas the keep, well, it's obviously a more military option. And finally, in the castle age, you'll have the choice between the Berkshire Palace acts as a keep with all the uh, behavior, technology, and bonuses, but it also has 50% greater weapon range, so a more powerful keep, or the Wingard Palace, which is a very particular army Expanded. recruitment building, which allows you to recruit the Wingard Army. It is an army unit that is very cheap, 100 food, 100 wood, 200 gold, but that uh, very slow to produce, 1 minute 15 seconds, and allows you to produce in aggregate, in one single production, one longbowman, one spearman, one man-at-arms, one knight, and one trebuchet. It's a great deal, great unit production uh, building, but it's a bit slow. Once again, a situational call. Do you need a stronger castle, or can you afford to slowly build a lot more units? Going to the Chinese, Close we button. here are looking at the first very particular faction. Particular in the sense that they have a different landmark mechanic than any other faction in the game, as well as some unique buildings. What they have is the dynasty mechanic. When they build both landmarks, which are they are the only faction that can build, they get access to the dynasty bonus of that age's landmarks. So, for example, here you see the Tang Dynasty. Once they have built both their age two uh, landmarks, they get access to the Tang Dynasty which gives 30% extra line of sight to their scouts. We see that they, you immediately gain the chemistry technology for free when advancing to the Imperial Age, so your gunpowder units are much, much stronger uh, the second you enter the Imperial Age. No need to wait until you research the, you get that research. They have quite a lot of unique units that we will go over. And the civilization bonuses, your villagers construct defenses 50% faster and all other buildings 100% faster. So that's kind of their econ facing advantage, faster building production. You enter the dynasties, we'll go over those. The chemistry technology and docks work 20% faster. That's their sea oriented advantage. The first Expanded. unique unit that I should talk about is the Imperial Official. That is the first one you will encounter when you start up a new game as, as uh, the Chinese Empire. The Imperial official will basically walk around and uh, collect tax from your buildings, allowing you a greater gold income. They also have the possibilities of improving bu uh, other buildings' efficiencies. So you'll most definitely want to be producing a lot of them, or as many as, of them as you can. The number is limited. They'll walk around and, uh, well, be, improve your, the efficiency of your buildings, improve production, and also collect money for you. In the barracks, you have access to the palace guard. They are basically an improved men-at-arms, as you can see. Move faster than men-at-arms, but with reduced armor. 
but they are still they still are an armored unit. They still are tough infantry with good damage, as the description says. And their counter is crossbowmen, knights, and lancers. Absolutely, that is the cro that is the counter for all men at arms. As far as their um, age one landmarks, you've got the Imperial Academy, which is uh, which is unique, which allows you uh, allows nearby buildings to generate more tax gold. So you're going to have to plan ahead and construct your buildings around this specific landmark in order to get the maximum value value out of it. Or you can build a Barbican of the Sun, you most likely, or you can build both. Once again, the Chinese can build both landmarks, which is basically um, an outpost. It fires a long range hand cannon and adds arrow slits while garrisoned, and offers vision to the stealth forest. It is a defensive structure, an early one. Then, in the feudal age, you will have access to a very special kind of archer, basically a better archer than the archer. High rate of fire, ineffective versus um, armored targets, more specialized in a sense. It will do even less damage against armored targets than the archer itself, but it will do a lot more damage against unarmored targets. It can absolutely decimate um, units that do not have armor. Inspired for historically by the by the old school um, uh, repeating crossbows that, uh, that the Chinese had. And in the archery range, you'll also be able to produce the Grenadier in the, uh, later on in the Imperial Age. Advanced range infantry with thrown explosive canisters that deal damage in a small area. Deals AoE damage, but short range, slow movement speed. Obviously, very, very useful against tight formations. Collapsed. Expanded. And finally, in the stable, one of the coolest unit concepts that, uh, of Age of Empires IV, the Fire Lancer. It is a lancer, but with an explosive charge at the tip of their lance. They will charge and deal AoE damage at the end of their charge when they hit their target. And they're extremely effective against buildings and siege engines. As, uh, as in general, this, in this game, explosive fire damage is extremely effective against buildings and siege engines. Really, really cool concept. Weak in melee combat, though, they're really dependent on their charge. Collapsed. Your, uh, your Feudal Age landmarks are going to be either the astron Astronomical Clock Tower, which acts as a siege workshop that produces siege engines with plus 50% health, so much stronger siege engines, or an Imperial Palace that has a large sight radius and or an Imperial Palace, and that activates the view location of enemy villagers for 10 seconds. If you build both, the Song Dynasty that you unlock allows you to build Expanded. the Zugenu, the unique uh, unit we saw in the archery range with the, a repeating crossbow. It will allow you to get reduced villager production time by 35%, and you'll be able to produce the unique village building, which is a, a unique building that increases your population cap by 40 in a single building. Collapsed. Finally, in the castle age, your options are going to be... oh. I messed up that description. You're starting the Tang Dynasty or your starting dynasty. You start with the 30% line of sight. I got a bit confused. Actually, the Song Dynasty, which you unlock when you build both the Imperial Academy and the Barbican, and the Yuan Dynasty, you unlock when you build both those landmarks that I went over. Oops. So, once you build those, you unlock the Yuan Dynasty. Villagers, officials, and military units gain 15% speed. You unlock the Fire Lancer that we that I showed with the with explosive lances and the unique building Expanded. that is the granary, which uh, villagers can drop off food at this building, improves the farm gather rate of nearby villagers by 15%, stacks with other granaries, and generates tax each time a resource is dropped off. Very nice. Collapsed. The specific landmarks to the castle age are the Great Wall Gatehouse, which you can build on top of your stone walls, increases the health of all the stone walls around it by 100%, and the troops on the walls, because you can garrison troops on walls in this game, will be dealing 50% extra damage. Great defensive structure. Especially, well, obviously if you build stone walls. Or you can also build the Spirit Way, which is um, a building that allows all buildings to create previously achieved dynasty units. So as we saw, the dynasty units are the Tsugenu, the Fire Lancer, and finally, later on, the Grenadier. This will allow all buildings to be able to, pre uh, to produce all of those units. Buildings near this landmark produce dynasty units at minus 30% cost, so you will be wanting to produce those units as well from units near in, uh, in the influence of this specific landmark. Finally, when you've built both of those, you finally achieve the Ming Dynasty, 
all your military unit skin plus 10% health, you unlock the unique Grenadier unit and you unlock the unique building that is Expanded. the Pagoda. Which is basically kind of like a monastery where you can place relics to generate resources. And it also generates tax, so even more resources. The building faster thing is so good, what the hell? It is. It's very strong. Close the French button. are a pretty basic uh, faction. They don't have the unique specificities that the, um, that the Chinese do. What they do have is uh, several unique units that make them very, very strong in the mid-game, in my opinion. As, as they're described here, they have strong cavalry. Their mounted combat is very, very powerful as well as their mainland economy, absolutely. So their civilization bonuses consist of faster villager and scout production per age achieved. Economic technologies are 30% cheaper. Resource drop-off buildings are 25 wood cheaper. Trade posts are revealed on the minimap at the start of the game. Traders can return any resource of your choice to the market. You just select them in the market. Melee damage techs are researched for free and trade ships return 20% more gold. Finally, influence, uh, uh, for influence, units produced from an archery range or stable within the influence of a keep are 20% cheaper. All really powerful bonuses, mostly centered on the economy, but you will see with their unique units, they definitely can hold their own militarily. No special town center unit. We're gonna go right ahead to Expanded. not the barracks, but Expanded. the dock. First off, they have the Gallias, a very powerful ship with a bombard mounted to the front of it. Extremely powerful naval confrontations and devastating to uh, coastal buildings. If you, if you are on a sea map, the French are definitely a force to contend with once you hit the castle age and can produce those. Obviously, they're very expensive. 360 wood, 300 gold. It's not free, but once you have a fleet of those, you are a force to be reckoned with. Landmarks in the Dark Ages are either the Chamber of Commerce, which acts as a market and gives a 30% resource buff to traders and trade ships, or the School of Cavalry, which acts as a stable, and all of your stables will produce units 20% faster. Obviously, on a land-based game, well, I, I would say it's one of those economy versus army choices. You either you either up, opt for the economy and trading and, and markets, but keep in mind, your traders need to be protected. If you don't have enough army to protect your traders, they're not going to be giving you many resources. Whereas with this, you get another production building, you get more cavalry. It's just... You just get the army rolling. I have won games just off of the mid-game aggression of a school of cavalry into extra stables into a huge strong army. Which we will go into the specifics why the cavalry for the French is so strong. If we open up the stable, Expanded. the unique unit that you need access to as soon as the feudal age, the royal knight, is extremely powerful. He gains a damage bonus for a damage bonus for three seconds after charging. He is in heavy armor, strong in melee combat, only countered by spearmen, as all cavalry is, and crossbowmen because he's heavily armored. This makes a strong force of royal knights extremely powerful in the feudal age. There will be very few factions that will have an effective answer to this if they haven't massed pikemen, and a mixed force of royal knights and, say, collapsed. Men at arms. Expanded. Well, those require the castle age, but a mixed force of uh, horsemen and the spearmen or and Expanded. or archers will be extremely devastating. Collapsed. Regardless of the army facing you. In the feudal age, your landmarks will be either the Royal Institute, houses all technologies unique to the French, research is 20% cheaper here and ignores age requirements, or a guild hall, which generates and stores resources over time. The more resources stored, the faster they are generated. Select between, and you can select between all the resources. So once again, um, a military-focused uh, building or an economy-focused building. Basically, a tempo choice. Will you drag the game out, go into end game, late game, where the resources are going to be very important, or will you bet on a specific? Uh, timing with strong research that you're gonna get for cheaper with the Royal Institute, a strong army, and just roll over your opponent. In the Castle Age, you're gonna have the choice between a keep, classic landmark, or the College of Artillery, which I like a lot. Provides immediate access to produce Royal Artillery, which is 20% more damage. Expanded. Those are unique artillery to the front, um, well, unique because they get the 20% damage buff, but also sp uh, two of them are unique. The Royal Cannon is, uh, the Cannon is a specific unit to the French, and the Royal Culverin is specific to just this building. Those siege engines 
are extremely powerful and you can only get them from this building so very very powerful choice for sure well keeps are always powerful did you pick the one you like best yet no I, I i have to i will probably have to play extensively with every faction to really know which one i prefer the most the Close holy button. roman empire here we're in another one of those uh of the factions that has a very particular um change to how it's gonna feel and play they have a unique town center unit the prelate which is a dark age monk he will not be able to convert enemy units he'll not be able to pick relics up he'll not be able to capture sacred sites until the castle age when all other factions also get their monks and their monasteries but he'll already be able to heal friendly units and most importantly uh, the prelates automatically inspire villagers near them to greatly improve their gather rate. This is the basic unique mechanic of the Holy Roman Empire. Um, let's go over the civilization bonuses for, before go, uh, moving they on. Extract additional gold from relics and inspire units with prelates that I've mentioned. Buildings constructed within the influence of a town center or keep gain the emergency repairs ability, which can be activated to repair the building. Early man-at-arms available in the feudal age. Garrison relics outside of out inside of outposts, keeps, and towers to improve their sight range, weapon range, armor, and damage. Docks can garrison relics, increasing attack speed of all ships by 5% per relic. So that is their big C buff. Costs of emplacements on outposts, wall towers, and keeps reduced by 25%. So you can make your keeps and outposts and towers mm -hmm. offensively dangerous for much cheaper. Here we see their early man at arms at the in the feudal age, which is a very powerful option in uh, for early aggression. And they have a unique unit starting in the Castle Age, the Landsnecht, which, as described, is a brave and armored infantry with enormous two-handed swords effective in mixed armies to do a melee attack that deals area damage. But they have low health. They are a high-impact, high-damage unit that can crash through enemy lines, doing, a doing terrific AoE damage, but if they get the jumped on, they will die extremely fast. They really need to uh, be placed and uh, properly and uh, be in, on the offensive to have the highest possible impact. Or possibly be poorly attacked into, but usually you will be attacking with them. Now, for the landmarks, in the Dark Age, you have a blacksmith, where technology research costs 25% less, an excellent choice, or the Aachen Capital, Chapel, sorry, which inspires units in a large radius so long as the prelate is garrisoned, which is more of an economical choice. Inspiring units, uh, I'll remind you, is when the prelate in increases the villagers' gathering rates. So this will definitely uh, buff your economy strongly in an AoE around the, cha the chapel. But having a blacksmith right off the bat with the cheaper research is definitely a powerful choice. Once again, depends on how long you think the game will be, what kind of timing you're going for. In the feudal age, your landmarks are either the Regnitz Cap the Cathedral, relics placed within the Cathedral gener generate plus 200% gold every minute. It can hold up to three relics. Much better um, revenue from your relics if you're playing around those. Or the Burgrave Palace, which acts as a barracks that produces infantry five at a time. Huge unit production from the Burgrave Palace. Obviously, extremely powerful military choice. Will allow you to macro very strongly with huge unit production. Honestly, the way I play, I I'm probably almost always gonna pick the Burgrave Palace uh, when choosing between the two. But I could see a more economically oriented, uh, slow, slow in the sense of the game timing player opt for the Cathedral for more revenue, especially on an archipelago type map. Finally, in the Castle Age, your two landmarks will be either a town center that produces villagers 75% faster and 75% cheaper, as well as please note that this landmark is 20% cheaper. Excellent choice to zoom straight into the Imperial Age with another town center, which is an, always extremely powerful for your economy, or the Elsbach Palace, which acts as a keep with plus 50% health and that influences all buildings around it to take 33% less damage. Tech trees. The Mongols are another extremely Close unique button. faction. They can pick up their um, their buildings and move them around to represent the no nomadic aspect of the, of the Mongol horde. Nearly every building they can construct is unique to their civilization, so we'll have to go over all of them, as well as how they, they, they play out. 
Just quickly, let's go over the civilization bonuses. They plunder 50 food and gold by igniting enemy buildings. All buildings can be packed up and re redeployed to a new location. You start with the maximum population limit and no need for houses. You get early horsemen in the Dark Age and early lancers in the Feudal Age. You can double produce units or research advanced versions of technologies using stone. And you gain plus 10% food, wood, gold and stone from trade routes with other traders. Finally, your C bonus is that transport ships have plus 50% health and move 15% faster. So, what are their unique buildings? Starting Expanded. with the Gare. The Gare is your one-size-fits-all resource building. All of your resource gatherers will gather them towards a Gare or obviously a town center. That is why the Gare here has all the different research, research trees, whether it's mining, woodcutting, or farming. The Ovu is the unique building um, that concerns stone cutting. It must be built on a stone outcropping. It harvests stone over time without workers, and you can only have one ovu at a time. Constructing a new ovu will destroy the prior one. It has a bunch Expanded. of unique research specific to the Mongols. Superior building mobility. Increasing the Khan's signal arrow duration by 5 seconds and range by 2 tiles. That The Khan's signal arrow is a buff that the Khan gives to the entire army and an AoE around it. Increasing the raid income for in igniting enemy buildings. Increasing torch damage of your infantry and cavalry so you can ignite buildings more easily. And finally, adding a stone bounty for igniting buildings. Collapsed. As well as the Ovu has an influence. Buildings constructed within the influence of an Ovu are able to double produce units or research improved versions of tech. So here we see their, their unique uh, cavalry in that they get the early horsemen starting already in the Dark Age. We should, be, we should normally see an early lancer here, but we don't for some reason. Why is that? I, see, I think this is a mistake in the, in, the, in the tech tree. There should be an early lancer here in the Feudal Age. Collapsed. Expanded. Maybe a bug. Nothing Collapsed. special in the dock. Their landmarks are either the Deer Stones, they provide the Yam Speed Aura, which has to do with the Yam Network technology, which honestly, I don't know what it does. I looked at it, Collapsed. and I still don't understand it. Expanded. Uh, where is it? Or you can build the Silver Tree, which acts as a market. It can build traders 50% faster and at a reduced cost. Expanded. Collapsed. Finally, the Pasture, Expanded. instead of farms, is a unique building that generates sheep. Which is great, because it's the only way to generate sheep. It will be your main food source. Main renewable food source, that is. Collapse. Feudal Age, the landmarks you have are either the Kurultai, which allows you when the can is nearby, the Kurultai heals all nearby damage units and provides a 25% damage bonus for 30 seconds, which is a great defensive bonus. I doubt you'll be able to build this building offensively, though, to benefit from the damage bonus. The 30 seconds damage bonus, you could... If you build it halfway to your enemy, you can probably use it for an attack. Or you can build a step readout, which acts as a gear. Gold dropped off at this landmark is increased by 50%, so a beefed up gold mine. Then you have the prayer tent, which is your monastery. The castle age landmarks are either the white stupa, which acts as an ovu and produces 240 stone per minute without a stone outcropping. So greatly buffs your stone production. Or you can build the Kaganate Palace, which spawns a cavalry army of horsemen, mangodai, or lancers every 90 seconds. Expanded. That will allow you to have a much bigger army production. Collapsed. The Can, oh yeah, I haven't mentioned the, oh yeah, the mangodai. They are a mounted Collapsed. archer. We can see them here in the, in the archery range. Um, confounding mobile ranged cavalry that can fire while moving. So obviously you have to, you're supposed to micro them and kite your enemies while moving them around. But they have a low weapon range, so a mistake in micro, a mistake in kiting can cost you your entire troops. And the Khan, as I said, it's, the, it's a unique unit that will provide a buff to your entire army around it when it fires the signal arrow. The rest have a civilization bonuses. They generate gold and increase bounty when killing animals. Higher bounty provides additional food income from all sources. Uh, they get an early knight available in the feudal age, stronger palisades with twice as much health, 
They can construct hunting cabins, which are improved mills that produce scouts and generate gold from nearby forests. But they can construct wooden fortresses, improved outposts with additional health and garrison slots, and their fishing ships don't have to return to a dock to drop off food. Finally, their influence is that lumber camps, camps built within the influence of a wooden fortress, return 20% more wood. And they have a bunch of unique units that we'll go to, uh, into. So as you can see, they are, uh, they are very focused on the concept of getting your food through hunting. That is why Expanded. they can produce scouts from the hunting cabins. Usually, you have to interrupt your villager production to build scouts, which is which makes it impossible, well, impossible for you to truly field a lot of scouts, or at least economically disadvantageous. You should be producing a lot of villagers. By being able to produce them from your hunting cabins, you can most definitely afford to research professional scouts, which will allow them to carry animal carcasses, and hunt wild animals, get those, those deer, those boar, those wolves, carry the carcasses back, and give you that much more food to harvest. Collapsed. That much more bound, uh, uh, increased bounty and gold generated for killing animals. As far as their unique Expanded. units are concerned, nothing Collapsed. special here. Expanded. All of their ships can be converted to any other type of ship that you have access to here. So, your Lodia fishing boat can be converted into a Lodia transport ship, can be converted into a Lodia trade ship, converted into a Lodia attack ship, converted into a Lodia demolition ship, and back and forth. That is obviously very, very special. The wooden fortress, their unique uh, defensive building here, can build castle turrets and a castle watch, basically act as a wooden castle. Keep in mind the fact that it's wooden means that Collapse. it can be very quickly destroyed by infantry. You can just throw fire at it. Finally, to finish off the unique expanded units, we have horse archers, which aren't unique, but they're special. Another unit you can kite with, like with the Mongols. And the Streltsy, most powerful ranged infantry with reasonable melee capabilities, increased rate of fire while stationary. High damage, lower cost, and hand, hand cannoneer, but slow movement speed. They basically have machine guns. Oh, and another unique Expanded. unit, the warrior monk. They have the only monks that can fight, even though they have low damage. But what that means is that they can not only pick up relics, convert enemy units, and capture sacred sites, they can improve the combat capabilities of nearby units after they attack. As you can see, they they cast a blessing on the units around them. Collapsed. Now for the landmarks. Collapsed. In the Dark Age, you have the Kremlin. Acts as a wooden fortress that comes with arrow slits, castle turret, and castle watch technologies already built in. Great early game defensive structure or offensive structure. You can build the Golden Gate, which allows the exchange of resources at a fav favorable rate. Generates an additional exchange every minute. In the Feudal Age, you can build the High Trade House, generating gold like a hunting cabin with the value increased by 200%, spawns deer that you can keep on hunting and collect bounty from, and obviously your villagers can drop food off at this building. Or you can build an Abbey of the Trinity, which acts as a monastery, producing warrior monks at half the cost and containing unique Expanded. religious technologies. Finally, in the Castle Age, your landmarks will be either a Spaskaya Tower, which acts as a keep with all weapon emplacements already in place and increased health, or a high armory, which decreases the cost of siege engines in nearby siege workshops by 20% and contains unique siege engine Expanded. technologies, which are the Wandering Town, ram damage increased by 100%, a setup and teardown speed of trebuchets and mangonels is instant, reducing the reload time of bombards by 25%, increasing the range of spring gulls by 1.5 tiles. Very, very powerful, unique researches. The Delhi Sultanate has a civilization bonuses that they can gather from, gather from berry bushes 25% faster, but cannot gather from boar. They have access to a unique unit in the Dark Age, the Scholar, all technology is free, but completes at a much lower rate. Scholars accelerate research speed. Infantry units are able to construct defenses. And fishing ships are equipped with an archer. 
For influence, buildings constructed within the influence of a mosque benefit from faster research speed based on how many scholars are garrisoned. So what are those scholars? What are those mosques? The mosques are the unique religious building that produces the scholars. Expanded. The scholars are their Dark Age monks. That TTS is the... Hey. It's accessible to UI speech, yeah. The scholars are this faction's monk that you can access in the Dark Age. They can heal, but most importantly, like, like they said, they can accelerate your research as well as accelerate production once you have this research. Allow scholars to garrison military buildings, boosting production speed by 100%. They can have improved sight range, improved movement speed, and offer a buff to the units they heal. 50% attack speed for 3 seconds. Collapsed. They are central to this faction, obviously, as research is central to the game. The other unique units that you get with this uh, faction, which are really, really cool, are Expanded. the elephants. From the archery range, starting in the castle age, you'll be able to get a tower war elephant, a powerful ranged cavalry that can fire while moving. High health, mounted with powerful archers, capable of attacking stone walls. However, it is slow and extremely expensive, 400 food and 600 gold. It's expanded. Converse, non-range converse, in the stable is the war elephant. It is, a, it is obviously melee, high health and armor, mounted with an advanced spearman, and also capable of attacking stone walls, and also slow. Very effective against cavalry, siege weapons, walls, and buildings. They both have unique research associated with each other. The ranged elephant has can be upgraded to have elite crossbowmen as riders, and the war elephant can be upgraded to have extra armor, which will also apply to the tower war elephants. Collapsed. The landmarks. In the Dark Age, your two landmarks are, are going to be Tower of Victory, melee and ranged infantry who move near this landmark permanently gain about 15% attack speed. I think that's going to be my go-to landmark. Dome of the Faith produces scholars, however, at 50% cost from the landmark, which is also really powerful because you will be producing a lot of scholars. Choice is hard, but a 15% attack speed buff seems really, really strong, especially since it's permanent. You're going to just rally your units to this building and have them all benefit from the buff before you send them into battle. In the Feudal Age, you can choose between the Compound of the Defender, which allows your infantry units to build stone walls, gates and towers, and reduces the stone cost of buildings and their emplacements by 25%, or the House of Learning, which contains many unique economic and religious technologies, Expanded. which are um, an additional 5 maximum population to your houses and town centers, Plus one health to nearby friendly units restored every second by mosques. Increasing the sight range of outposts. And in the Imperial Age, age increasing carrying capacity of villagers. Huge economic buff by five. Or honed blades. Increase the melee damage of men at arms and knights by three. Collapse. As much as I think it's cool to have infantry units build stone walls and towers. Unless you're tower rushing your opponent with stone towers. I think I'll usually go for the House of Learning. Finally, in the Castle Age, your two choices will be, be your choice will be between the Hizar Academy, constantly generating food based on total number of technologies researched, strong economical option, or the Palace of the Sultan, which automatically produces Tower War elephants, and you can garrison up to four scholars in the landmark to increase production speed. The Abbasid Dynasty has for civilization bonuses the same. Uh, the first one is the same as the um, as the Delhi Sultanate. Uh, gathering from berry bushes 25% faster, but cannot gather from boar. Infantry, however, the rest are different. Infantry units are able to construct rams and siege towers without researching siege engineering. You can advance in ages by building wings from the House of Wisdom. Nearby, nearby buildings gain plus 5 fire armor. I'll go more into detail on that in a second. And you can enter a golden age to speed up resource gathering rate, research times, and production speed. Finally, docks are 50% cheaper. This this faction is another one that is unique and hard to play simply because you will not be teching up through the ages the same way you did with the other factions. You'll build only one house of wisdom, one landmark, and that your house of wisdom Expanded. will be adjacent, you'll build other buildings adjacent to your house of wisdom. The adjacency of those other buildings will allow you to add wings to the house of wisdom. Every wing built will allow you to advance your, the age of your empire. So it is very SimCity focused, 
you will have to be able to plan ahead how you're going to arrange your uh, your buildings around your house of wisdom in order to get the most out of this empire. And I think that is the main challenge of it. Then obviously for your build order, you are going to have to determine whether you build the culture wing, the economic wing, the military wing, or the trade wing first. They each have their unique tech tree of research, which at every age offers you an option, a very powerful research that is flavory, flav, flavorally related to the wing you built. For the culture wing, preservation of knowledge, reducing the cost of all technology by 30%, healing, every, uh, healing nearby units by two health every one second, and finally, in the Imperial Age, imams, uh, allowing Imams to convert units without holding a relic, but as long as you only target a single unit. The Economic Wing allows you to reduce the production cost of villagers by 50%, improving their gathering rate from farms by 15%, and finally, allowing them to drop off 8% more resources. The Military Wing improves the armor, uh, allows your camels to improve the armor of nearby infantry by 1 allows your camel riders shields that improve their melee armor by 3, and finally increases the health of all infantry by 15%. And the last but not least, the trade wing, which allows you spice rows, increasing the gold income from traders by 30%, and granting 5 armor to traders and trade ships, and finally, in the Imperial Age, traders also return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25% the base gold value and is set at the market. You also get several research uh, that is unrelated to a specific wing. The phalanx, increasing the attack range of spearmen, increasing the movement speed of camel units, increasing the armor of camel units, and composite bows, reducing the reload time of archers. Collapsed. You notice there was a lot of mentions of camels. Those are indeed the unique unit of the Abbasid dynasty. Expanded. In the archery range, we see the Camel Archer, starting in the Feudal Age. Highly mobile and durable ranged unit, effective against all cavalry. Bonus damage versus Spearmen, which is very, very unique, having um, a cavalry unit that is uh, good against Spearmen. And it causes enemy cavalry to deal less damage. And Expanded. in the Stable, starting in the Castle Age, you can build Camel Riders. They, are, they do bonus damage to cavalry. And they, uh, just as the camel archers, they cause enemy cavalry to deal less damage. It's really powerful against enemy cavalry. That is it. I hope you enjoyed the little expose you. of all the factions, Learned and I hope you're going to have fun playing Item Age of Empires 4. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. There will be more Age of Empires content coming very, very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.